fleeing unimaginable horror, embarking on long and dangerous journeys in search of safety. There are currently an estimated 15 million officially recognised refugees in the world right now, and sadly for many, reaching Europe does not mean an end to their suffering. Many NGOs are ringing alarm bells over the treatment of refugees once they get to so-called safe havens. Asylum claims in Europe have gone up by about 15% last year, but it's the bloc's southern borders that are feeling the pressure. Asylum levels there have skyrocketed to nearly 90%. Our reporter, Michel Santos, met Nur Dean from Somalia. His nightmare continued when he finally made it to Hungary. Now in Frankfurt, Germany, without asylum status, he prefers to not reveal his identity. Fearing for his life, escaping a brutal war, Nurdin, a journalist, fled Somalia. He finally reached Turkey and bribed his way onto a plane, heading for Hungary. There he was imprisoned, treated like a criminal and terrified as he was forced to take unknown substances. Actually, it was very bad because of um, pitting the people and uh, uh, forcing to people uh, something like you're drinking. You don't know what is it really, but you're drinking something. And uh, you don't know what you're going to just be bad or not, that things that you're drinking. And uh, without and bad food, when you want to go to the toilet, you will go one time to the toilet. And then you may, if you just feel a urine, you should have to make urine inside the room that you are sleeping. In a one room, you should have to leave like 12 people or 15, more than 12. In a small cell? In a small cell, like four meters. In Hungary, refugees can be detained for several months, often in inhumane conditions. We asked the government for comment and were sent a statement which was issued following UN condemnation of treatment of refugees. Hungary maintains that it respects all EU regulations but is overloaded with asylum requests. It is not the only European country accused of mistreating refugees. Greece is considered among the worst. We came here for being security, being for helping us, but exactly nobody helped us. An EU regulation stipulates that refugees must be processed in the country of entry. Neodin is now in Germany, awaiting a final court decision. If he's sent back to Hungary, he's likely to be homeless, a prospect he dreads. To be really without homeless, it's better for me to be in a jail of Germany. The case of Neodin is one of many. Several NGOs claim human rights are being violated for three main reasons at the gates of Europe. Inadequate legislation, lack of political will and weak solidarity among EU member states. Joining us on the front line to discuss the issue of refugees in Europe are Daniel Endres, European Director of the UNHCR, and Karl Kopp, also European Director of the NGO Pro Asyl. Daniel, um, let, let's put a human face to what's going on here. Where are these refugees coming from? Who are they? What stories do they tell? Mm -hmm. uh, the largest number of refugees coming to Europe comes from Afghanistan. Uh, then it's uh, uh, also Serbia um, and Iraq and other war-affected countries. Um, especially when we look at Afghans, obviously the situation in Afghanistan has deteriorated of the, over the last few years and um, it's insecure. And so also in the neighboring countries where m millions of them have sought asylum, the situation is becoming more and more difficult. So for many, there is no way out and they're seeking a, a safer and, and more secure life um, in other parts of the world, including in Europe. And as we were just hearing, the situation in southern Europe has become critical, Carl. Um, what's happening there? Critical was that uh, more than 2,000 people died last year in the Mediterranean. So there was not a state of emergency, it was more an artificial one. So the lack of solidarity, as you already mentioned, is, is a key issue. We, we did not support maybe Malta and Italy in a proper way to, to, to solve this humanitarian crisis and Europe was not ready to rescue the boat people. So, so the EU is at the moment um, negotiating a new European 
common asylum policy. Jean Lambert, who's an MEP, Green MEP, is at the heart of those negotiations. Let's listen to what she has to say. Well, the positive thing is that a common asylum system at least is in process, that we, we recognise that we need to have um, a uniform application of human rights across the European Union. The negative part of it is that member states still want to carry on a lot of the time doing what they've been doing, rather than looking at how can they really work together to give a real system with real life that actually protects the people who really need protection. So she doesn't seem that convinced. How com convinced are you that this will be better than what's in place now? What are the plus points? What are the negative sides of this new policy? Um, the important thing is that the standards are at a level that people cannot be detained for asking for asylum. That should not, never be uh, a reason and it's not a crime to ask for safety. Um, so important is that a level of standard is in the new Common European Asylum System. And that is, of course, now a political negotiation. What is even more important is that all countries implement the Common European Asylum System so that on the ground the conditions are met that should be according to the European law. Many uh, NGOs like Prizel have been up in arms about the question of detention, saying that now this actually explicitly mentions detention and in some way tacitly sanctioning imprisonment of refugees who, you know, are innocent people. Seeking asylum is not a crime. Flight is not a crime. But the reality is people are detained in, in Mal on Malta Island up to one year, Hungary up to one year as an asylum seeker increase for months and even in the centre of Europe many asylum seekers as Dubliners facing deportation back to Italy or Malta or Hungary are detained. So this is a very, very sad reality and therefore it's very important not to create a detention directive, we need a reception directive. So we advocate and we appeal to the European pa uh, Parliament, delete these detention grounds. Refugees are not criminals. Asylum seekers are not criminals. Unaccompanied minors should never be detained, maybe. Where does the UNHCR stand on that? We understand that somebody can be detained, but not just for, you know, securing the asylum process or, or for, for a number of rather generic reasons to be detained without um, proper limitation. I think that is a very dangerous precedent to set and therefore we are very worried um, if the grounds for detention are expanded as some suggestions are on the table. Children, that's also another big issue. 46 percent of uh, refugees are under 18. Mm. There's also in this common European asylum policy there's no prohibition of the t detention of children and they're very kind of deep psychological effects I can only imagine on the detention of children. Can you tell me a little bit about that, Carl? This is a very sad story of the Euro concerning the European asylum and refugee policy that thousands of kids are detained, separated children are detained. Kids mm. need a dignified accommodation, they need protection from the first day and uh, at the moment they are really under threat. They are victims of exploitation within the detention centres. Yes. Sexual harassment, they are victims of ex exploitation outside if there is not a proper protection system. And it's really a shame that trying to get access to another European country, trying to get access to family members, little kids die on the way from Greece to Italy. And this is really a shame that we are not able to create a common protection system for these kids from the first day when they arrive in Hungary, in Greece, wherever, on Malta Island. And uh, we are not able to protect these children. So, so these are critical times in the negotiating process of this common European asylum mm. policy. And Cyprus will be taking the head of the EU presidency in just a few weeks. So, as such, will be presiding over these negotiations. And it strikes me as kind of disturbingly ironic that Amnesty has just recently slammed Cyprus. It's important that Cyprus is given all the support in, in the uh, difficulty of managing a presidency. 
and of course um, the decision of what is being um, what is being shaped. It's not the it's not the presidency that decides. It's it's the, all the all the member states. It's the parliament. It's the commission. So there are important players that shape the European. Uh, common asylum system. Carl, you've been in, in the, the business of helping refugees for 20 years now. How have you seen things change? Yeah, <laughs> when I started, it was always very difficult, but uh, detention was not an issue. Now it's, it's getting more and more the rule. Detention of minors is, 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 is the sad story inside the EU and this mass dying at our European borders, this is really painful. And um, I think there Europe lost track, lost credibility. And uh, it's very difficult to, to handle this. Gentlemen, many thanks for having joined us on the front line. The UNHCR has warned that in the coming 10 years, we'll see even more refugees as well as internally displaced people. We've just been concentrating on the issue of refugees and asylum seekers. But if we take into account internally displaced people, there are some 42.5 million people worldwide forced to flee their homes. Let's just put that into perspective. Spain's population is about 47 million. Our discussion continues online. We'd really like to hear from you, so tweet us your comments and questions. In the meantime, on the front line, we'll be back next month.